What's up everybody? So in this video, we're going to be talking about the origin of water. This is most likely your first HL topic if you're an HL student. Now, what is the difference between HL and SL? So don't overthink it. HL, there, there, there are two things that can make HL different. One, HL can be the same thing talked about in SL, but in more detail. So more accurate, more complex. Or HL can be another topic that SL doesn't even talk about. So for example, let's say SL does not even talk about viruses, whereas HL does. So that is simply a way in which HL is different. It's just a new topic that SL doesn't even talk about. Now, um, another example is photosynthesis. So SL and HL do photosynthesis, but HL will just cover photosynthesis in more detail than SL. So that's the two ways in which HL is different. So it's not always more difficult. Sometimes it's just more information. So in today's video, remember in the previous video, we talked about water, everything that you needed to know about water. Now in for HL, you need to also know the origin of water. You need to know where water comes from, how it originated on earth. Okay, so that's what we're going to be talking about. So let's just get started. So a very long time ago, our earth looks something like this. Okay, magma, it's like lava, hot molten, it's a hot molten rock. Okay, you can imagine if you put some kind of life on here, it would just instantly disintegrate. Water, if you put water here, it will just evaporate instantly. Humans would just instantly melt, right? Everything would just die. It's not, it's not habitable at this moment. But after a very long period of time, this rock or this planet cooled down a little bit, but still to a point where it's still not habitable. It's still some, some hell, right, to live on. But after an even longer time, we got Earth, okay? So what's the difference between this? Here is water. Here is water. So the Earth, the original planet, cooled so much that it was able to eventually be cold enough to hold water. And we know water is absolutely crucial for life to exist. So how exactly did this happen? Because it can't just miraculously cool by itself. Something has to cause it to cool. And there are many theories. And the one we need to know about is called the asteroid theory. Okay, the asteroid theory. It's a very interesting theory, actually. So here we have our rock from a long time ago. Now, what caused it to gradually cool? So what happened was, the theory was this, that in space, right, in our universe, in our solar system or whatever, there are a lot of planets, right? And, and there are also asteroids. And all of these float around at their own pace and all of that. So it is, it is very likely for them to actually collide at some point. So asteroids can strike a planet, right? Now, interestingly, the theory was that asteroids have some water on them, very little water, and they can strike the earth. And as they strike the earth, they can deposit some water. Obviously, this planet is so hot, all the water would just instantly evaporate. But if this happened enough over a long period of time, gradually, this water would cool the planet very, very slowly. For example, let me give me a kind of real life example. When you're outside in the summer and you stand on some kind of material, especially metal, it is freaking boiling, right? So you say you're in the, in, this, in the summer next to a pool and it's very, very hot. If you pour some water on there and then stand on it, it's, it's actually bearable, but it won't be long before it's very hot again. So it's the same kind of concept here. These asteroids with water on them came to this planet, deposited it, and gradually cooled it over a very, very long period of time. So over a very long period of time, this planet became permanently cooler. When it reached this point of being cool enough, it was able to actually retain the water, okay? It's actually able for the water to stay on this planet. And this water eventually accumulated and accumulated until it looked something like this, our actual Earth, okay? So what is the evidence for this? Because this is just me speaking. How do I know this is even true? What was the evidence for this? This is just some random theory. You're right. So what is the, what is the evidence? So what scientists did was they looked at water from earth and they found this they found that water on earth there are two types okay that's that's already weird i didn't know there's two types of water so there are two types there's a normal water h2o right which has oxygen and two hydrogens okay now this kind of water is the majority of the water on earth it's like by far the most water it's the it's the highest constituent it's the most most uh, present okay this is this is overwhelmingly present compared to the other one the other one is called heavy water okay and this is 
It's pretty much the same thing. It's got an oxygen and two hydrogens, but this hydrogen is a bit heavier than this hydrogen. So because it's a bit heavier, we give it another name, okay? We call it, we call it duodenium, okay? Um, so it's, the only difference with this hydrogen is that it's slightly heavier, and therefore we call this water heavy water, okay? So you need to understand that in our, on our planet, on the Earth, the water here exists as a ratio. The majority is our normal water that we know, and then a very small minority is this water. So there's a ratio, okay? So then they went to look at this asteroid, okay? They went to look at the asteroids, and they wanted to look, they wanted to find out what the, what the water was on this asteroid. And they found that the ratio, they found that the ratio of these two waters, um, normal water and heavy water, was the exact same on the asteroids than it was on Earth. So therefore they said, damn, this cannot be a coincidence. It must be that the asteroids deposited water on our planet over a long period of time. Because what's the chance that the exact, that the ratio of these two waters are the exact same on an asteroid and on our planet? So that's the theory that we need to know, the asteroid theory of how water originated on, on, on Earth. First, the Earth had to cool, and then these asteroids had to actually deposit this water on our planet. Okay, great. So we're almost there. What we need to know now is something about Goldilocks. I hope you know Goldilocks. So Goldilocks, if you don't know, is a, is a blonde lady in a storybook that always complains when things are not perfect. If, 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 it, if, it, if it, it's the one about Goldilocks and the three bears. When she's sitting on this, hard, on, the, on, the, on this one chair, it's too hard. And then she moves to us another chair, it's too soft. And then she finds another chair that's just perfect. So our planet kind of works the same way. It, it, is, it is picky. It needs a perfect environment, okay? And we call this perfect environment um, that has the perfect temperature, the Goldilocks zone, okay? So in our solar system, there is this area called the Goldilocks zone, also known as the habitable zone. And it is an area that would, al that would allow water to exist in its liquid form, right? Because if it's too hot, what happens? If it's too hot, it's going to evaporate. If it's too cold, it won't be liquid. So just like Goldilocks, our planet is picky and it wants, and if it is in this Goldilocks zone, then it would be happy. In that scenario, it would allow water to exist. So what, what do I mean? Where is this Goldilocks zone? Okay, so here we got it. In our, in our solar system, right, we have many stars, one of which is the sun, okay? Can you guess which one is our sun? The M, because sun is a star, remember, it's not a planet. So is our sun the M star, the K star, or the G star? Because these are three different types of stars you can have. So ours is a G star. A G star um, has a very, very large, very, very large habitable zone, a very, very large Goldilocks zone. So this, this color here is perfect because if you're too close to the star, it is too hot. If you're too far away, it's too cold. But if you're just in the middle, it's perfect. That's why we call it the Goldilocks zone. Okay, It's this perfect equilibrium, this perfect space that is just right that has just the right temperature for water to exist in its liquid form. These other ones, notice a K star, for example, this, this Goldilocks zone is slightly smaller. So it's, very, it's even rarer to find a planet there that would have um, the right um, temperature for life to exist, I mean for water to exist. And an M star is even smaller. So just know that our sun is a G star and it has a very large um, Goldilocks zone and our Earth is located inside this Goldilocks zone. And any planet that wants to sustain water needs to be in this Goldilocks zone. Okay, so what we need to understand is, to support life, a planet should ideally be in this Goldilocks zone. Because if they're in this Goldilocks zone, then water can exist in liquid form. Okay, and, if they're, and the reason why water can exist in this liquid form is because the temperature is just perfect. Okay, now besides temperature... So the temperature needs to be perfect, so water can be in its liquid form. But without gravity, water would just float away into space. So this particular planet, so our Earth, also needs to have a sufficient gravity, gravitational pull to keep the water on Earth. If it didn't have this gravitational pull, the water would just float away. So there's two conditions that needs to be met uh, so far. It needs to have suitable temperatures, and it needs to have a gravitational pull so that water can exist on the Earth in liquid form. Now lastly, one last thing, 
is this planet should also have an atmosphere and a magnetic field to protect it from the sun. We know that around our Earth there is, a, there is an atmosphere, and this prevents the radiation from the sun from killing everything instantly. So this planet, to support a life, this planet should also have an atmosphere and a magnetic field that can protect from the um, radiation from the sun. So I hope this makes sense for you. What you just need to know is that um, basically Earth cooled over many years and the theory by which water came onto the Earth is called the asteroid theory. And it's because of the ratios being similar um, on an asteroid than it is on Earth. So it must have been that asteroids landed, uh, collided with Earth, depositing water and eventually giving us our Earth. And then lastly, for a planet to actually support life, it needs water. And to have water in liquid form, it needs suitable temperatures, gravitational pull, and it must have an atmosphere and magnetic field. If you understand this Goldilocks zone idea, then you just nailed it. So that's it. That's all you need to know for HL in this uh, specific topic.